Well, in that case, we will now move to questions to Cabinet members until the 45-minute continuous period for questions and answers has ended. So, Councillor Boswell, please. Question 14 to the Cabinet Member for Education and Children's Services. Um, I thank the member for um, the question. The whole um, issue over the one o'clock clubs, of course, is being reported to our um, committee on the 12th. Um, uh, but uh, some of the information has been um, in the public domain for a bit longer. Um, Councillor Boswell is well aware of our need to provide the two-year-old places. And in fact, um, I think a, a year or so ago was um, involved in discussions when we were talking about the possible use of the one o'clock centres to provide some of these places. Um, uh, one particular point that she mentions is about the consultation um, and of course it, it's a premature, premature question because presumably written before the paper came out and the method and uh, what have you for consultation is contained within the paper. Councillor Boswell. Thank you Mr Mayor. Um, I thank the Cabinet Member um, for her answer. I mean, obviously, from this side, we very, very much welcome um, the offer for two-year-olds, um, disadvantaged two-year-olds, for free childcare. Um, but I believe that it's a really complicated and complex and uh, very flawed policy, and finding a solution to provide this childcare is going to be very difficult. Um, I completely agree that this paper has not come to our committee yet, so in a way we're speaking about it um, before everybody's had a chance to um, debate the, the whole issue. But I am concerned that if we go down the route, as is suggested in the paper, of charging um, for the one o'clock provision, that the families who um, are, have the two disadvantaged two-year-olds, um, they will get the provision, um, and the families who can afford uh, the provision will get it to the one o'clock clubs. But the group that will really, really miss out are the ones who four or five pounds uh, for paying for a one o'clock club for two or three children will be a real struggle for them, and um, I'd really and like to know what we're going to do for them. Um, I thank the councillor for the supplementary. I make absolutely no excuse about using our um, better one o'clock centres that are in um, beautiful locations with very nice open playgrounds for the most deprived youngsters in the borough. Um, when the one o'clock cups were originally opened, there was no provision for mothers at all anywhere, um, and they were introduced um, over 30 years ago. There is now, of course, an awful lot of provision out there, um, but I, as I said, I make absolutely no excuse for using our jewels um, for the most deprived within our community, who probably have no gardens. Um, there are stay and play sessions which is the jargon in 14 of our children's centers across the borough and also um, the um, I think off the top of my head it's five one o'clock center children's centers and um, that will remain so it isn't as though there isn't provision right across the bor borough I think what we're actually arguing about is the use of these particular um, one o'clock centres, which um, one is in my own ward, so I do understand why the residents are upset about it, um, but I do think that using them in this way is the best possible use. Councillor Sutters. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Um, does a cab member agree with me that there are many ways in which we can deliver stay and play, and it has been discussed that we will um, encourage the most creative possible ways for the nursery providers to come forward and open the one o'clock buildings as, as much as possible both at weekends and during the week to to the public and whether that means paying for it or not we don't know at the moment because we haven't seen what they've come forward with I like the title cab member I mean it's kind of, I quite like that <laughs> some familiarity about it 
<laughs> of course, um, the councillor is absolutely right. And uh, in fact, one of the providers at the meeting that she was chairing yesterday, which was the early years partnership meeting, asked me afterwards why we had, um, within the possibilities, restricted it to them opening up um, on a Saturday, which I have to say has been universally accepted. The parents have all said that is such a good idea. And they said, because if we were uh, lucky enough to win the tender, we'd want to do it on Sundays as well. So the private sector undoubtedly has some innovative ideas, which as a council, we wouldn't have been able to um, contemplate. So I think that at the end of the day, this is going to benefit um, an awful lot of people. Councillor Caddy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, question 15 to the Cabinet Member for Education and Children's Services. Um, thank you, and I thank the Councillor um, for her question. Um, and um, I think I probably partly answered it uh, in the previous answer. I would just add that, um, having done some research over the last week, there are 27 stay and play sessions that are available also within the voluntary sector um, across the borough. I haven't as yet quite done a mapping exercise to find out how geographically good they are, but I will certainly do that and make sure that there aren't any areas that are excluded. Supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Caddy. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I thank the Cabinet Member for her answer. Um, could the Cabinet Member also confirm that the Council will offer support for any mums who might like to look into setting up community groups themselves to provide stay and play facilities, including providing information on any grants, etc., which might be available? Um, thank you. Uh, I thank the Cabinet Member. Uh, the uh, Councillor for her uh, question. <laughs> you never know, do you? Hang on. Um, <laughs> But um, absolutely, I mean, we, we will do everything we can to encourage um, uh, mothers to be setting up uh, these sessions in, at the times that suit them best. And of course, uh, as councillors know here, there are uh, grants available from the Big Society Fund, uh, particularly in the areas of um, deprivation. Um, so it would be very good to see some self-help stay and play groups started. Councillor Daly. Uh, question 16 to the Cabinet Member for Strategic Planning and Transportation. Ah, thank you very much, Councillor Daly. A very interesting question. Um, as you will see from the uh, written answer, um, we've got a fantastic record on road safety, especially for children. Um, we will be bringing plans forward for uh, road safety in this borough in the, in, in the coming years, later on this year. And, and I expect the, uh, the road, safe, our road safety record and, uh, to, be con to continue to be excellent and to continue to be reducing the number of uh, children uh, injured on our roads. A supplementary. Um, I thank the Cabinet Member for his answer. Uh, actually, I did struggle to see whether or not the Council has a good record on child road safety in the answer, because there's only his word, no evidence. But my supplementary uh, was more that, obviously, there are some sites that are not going to have any ongoing uh, school crossing patrol provision, and even many of those that are going to uh, are on temporary contracts sponsored by um, businesses. Uh, what plans are in place to ensure that there will be continued school crossing patrols uh, across primary schools across the borough uh, and that we won't be facing all of this again uh, in just a year or two? I thank Councillor Daly for the supplementary. Um, if he wants to have the figures on safety, then he needs to ask the question on safety. The question you've asked doesn't ask for the figures on safety, which is why we have not provided them. Unfortunately, although my officers are extremely talented, they are not mind readers. So please, if you want to a particular information, they'll be more than happy to provide it to you. Um, with regards to the position, the council has made it quite clear. Um, when we've looked at the um, effectiveness of, of school crossing patrols, we do not believe um, that they are effective. Um, in terms of uh, school crossing patrols, we've provided lots of opportunities for schools and parents to come forward um, and provide funding for themselves. Many of them have done that, and they will have that opportunity to do that on ongoing. Councillor Locker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, would the cabinet member Join with me in thanking the council officers for their creative approach in seeking outside sponsorship to help us retain a number of crossing patrols across the borough. 
And if the Talk Talk scheme proves successful, will you look at the feasibility of extending the approach perhaps to other patrols or areas of the council which might benefit from such a partnership with business? Uh, thank Councillor Locker for that excellent question. Um, the, the work of the officers in, in this area has been absolutely fantastic and I, I uh, take my hat off to, the, to them and the hard work they've done, not just on the Talk Talk contract but on, on, on uh, the whole uh, work they've done around uh, lollipop men and women um, and um, certainly I think we will continue uh, to see what we can do in order to provide uh, services that uh, residents want in that area. Councillor Dawson. Member for Education and Children's Services. It's obviously definite doubt as to whether I'm a member. Um, <laughs> um, yes, I particularly like uh, this question. Uh, thank the member very much for it. And, um, and the answer as provided. Um, it's a really good news story for um, young people in Wandsworth. And they are definitely... Um, well served by some of our voluntary organisations. Um, you'll notice, I think it's in the third paragraph, that Storm are mentioned there as um, the organisation that are moving into Base D. And avid readers of the Standard will have seen last week, I think it was last week, that she was awarded one of their Unsung Heroes of London awards for the wonderful work that she does. Um, and we're delighted that we've been able to um, help in... Um, moving her to larger premises at Base D. Um, and that is exactly the sort of uh, uh, innovative work from the voluntary sector that this fund will be able to help and support. Supplemental. Um, thank the Cabinet Member for her answer. Um, does she think that the revised grant scheme will in fact encourage not just innovation but a number of new groups that in the past have found it quite difficult maybe to get started or even to access resources from the council and that that will further enhance the voluntary and community groups that do get involved in providing these youth services at a very local level, maybe in contrast to some of the larger cooperation arrangements that we've had in place over many, many years? Um, yes, I thank the councillor for his supplementary. Um, uh, the reason why the grant system and the way for applying needed changing is because traditionally those that knew about it applied and got grants. And as the youth service and the way that uh, youth provision is developed has changed, it was necessary to change a funding mechanism to make sure that the um, organization, the youth clubs, and the council could keep up with those changes. I have absolutely no doubt that there will be some new um, uh, organizations and new bodies, um, like, for once, like uh, as an example, the one on the Alton. It's a really good example of um, uh, how residents have come together to form a club um, with a bit of support from us. So I have absolutely no doubt that it will uh, bring on some new groups. Councillor, Mrs. Leonie Cooper. Uh, question number 18 to the Cabinet Member. I thank, uh, I thank the Councillor for her question. Um, there really do seem to be uh, no limits to the uh, Labour Party's capacity to uh, get hold of the wrong end of the stick, or truncheon, should that be, uh, when it comes to uh, matters policing. Um, fresh uh, from their misunderstandings over the, uh, the Battersea uh, police station proposals, uh, they have now uh, got themselves rather confused about the difference between a front desk and a police station. Um, we really have an absolutely absurd question here. Um, the Mayor was uh, very clear in his manifesto about what he intended to do. Uh, he said he would massively boost uh, neighbourhood policing and he said he would do that while maintaining police numbers, which incidentally he increased, um, and that is exactly what he's doing in this plan, and that is the central purpose of it. Um, he did not, it is worth noting, uh, make any commitment to, uh, to uh, continue with outdated methodologies which are inefficient, um, increasingly irrelevant, and uh, not people's top priorities. 
And I refer, of course, to uh, a number of things there, but uh, front desks are among them. Uh, we've ju seen just this week that uh, uh, we are the borough with the lowest usage levels for front desks anywhere in London. Um, it does seem to me that it's only the Labour Party that is concerned about preserving uh, front desks uh, and some newspapers I might mention. Uh, and I, I, I look forward to uh, soon seeing them launch a uh, campaign for the restoration of the police blue boxes. Councillor Cooper. Uh, well, if there are no proposals to close police stations, uh, which uh, I believe the Cabinet member has admitted that there are, um, certainly the front counters, can he please explain the disposal list which was released by City Hall, uh, and perhaps he could confirm that Lavender Hill has now definitely been removed from that list, because there seems to be a, a tiny touch of confusion here about retaining it or selling it. If it's going to stay open, how could it be sold as well? Uh, and also, if that is the case, if, if we're not going to have um, police stations closed, could he please explain why there's the current MOPAC um, consultation, particularly coming to this borough on the 26th of February, over severely curtailed services across the borough, which I think he will agree were not mentioned at all in the current mayor's election campaign. As uh, I, I thank the uh, I thank the council for the supplementary questions, um, as ever there were a number of them. Uh, I think the confusion is on the other side. Uh, it's very clear uh, what is going on. Uh, if you want clarification on uh, disposal lists, then I'm not the person to ask. I suggest that question is directed at MOPAC, but I think it's been very clear all along. And the fact that uh, Lavender Hill was ever on it demonstrated only that it was a fundamental review and that absolutely everything was being questioned, quite rightly. Uh, and when the police are getting rid of of uh, New Scotland Yard headquarters, I think uh, that just underlines what a fundamental review it is. So uh, there is no confusion. The only confusion, I'm afraid, uh, is amongst the party opposite. Um, and uh, the proposals laid out in the MOPAC Estates Review, um, I think, are, are very clear. Uh, and they are for consultation, which is why there is a meeting here on 26th of February. Again, I think that's a very simple, straightforward process that we can all understand and all welcome. And I am absolutely certain that at the end of this, what we will have is a much more efficient policing operation in this borough. And that, I'm sure, is what residents want. Yeah. Second supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Mrs. Clay. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, does the Cabinet member share with me the dismay, uh, my dismay, that the members opposite are harking back to an old-fashioned way of doing things? They'd probably like to see whistles reintroduced, I should imagine. And the, the, the thing that people in Wandsworth really care about is the number of people, policemen, on the street. If these front desks are no longer open, how many extra police will be on the street as a result of this. I thank the councillor for the, uh, the supplementary question, uh, and it's a very, very uh, good direct question. Um, we estimate it will release between 10 and 15 officers uh, to get onto uh, the beat, so it's all about feet on the beat. The question comes down to where would we rather have the policemen? Would we have them behind desks with an average of 1.2 visitors per hour all the way through the night, incredibly inefficient, or would we rather have them as part of neighbourhood policing teams being much more effective? As ever, the Labour Party is on on the side of inefficiency and waste of public funds uh, and the rest of us can see which way this is going and as ever they're on the wrong side of the argument. Councillor Mrs Dunn. Strategic planning and transportation. I thank the councillor for this question in one word yes. Um, well, Councillor Mrs Dunn. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I, I also welcome this, but um, one question I do have is to do with um, safety again. I'm on a bit of a safety thing at the moment. Um, many of the people who um, may be using these Boris bikes may not be habitual cyclists. And I am I'm just thinking about this a bit. I'm wondering what Wandsworth Council has in place, what sort of safety schemes we have for cyclists. Could you please remind me? Um, we do a lot of work um, um, around cycling um, for uh, different age groups and, and different experience. Also, I know that um, various uh, cycle groups um, around the area are doing um, uh, supporting people in, in starting cycling in particular. So, for example, um, 
they, they'll do an organized uh, trip for your first sort of commute into town and you can cycle with sort of 10 other people in order to help there's plenty of uh, opportunities for people to do it and actually the numbers that came out um, from the office of national statistics last week showed a significant increase in cycling generally um, over the last 10 years um, across the borough we've seen uh, the number of people cycling into work nearly double so, sorry. Councillor Mrs Cooper. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Um, welcoming the bikes is one thing, um, which the Cabinet member has done previously. This question seems strangely recycled from a previous meeting. Um, but would you agree that proper consultation is the, uh, over the siting of the docking stations is the key to ensuring both that the bikes are welcomed by residents and well used? Um, yep, we have an excellent recycling rate in this borough and I'm very proud of it, um, as, as I'm sure uh, all of my colleagues are. Um, with regards uh, to it, yes, um, we've had um, uh, consultations currently going out with various uh, planning applications. Um, it's a two-stage process, both planning and uh, a transport management order, TMO, um, and we're, 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 in, we're looking forward to the, the feedback that we get through that process. Councillor Randall. I ask question 23 of the cabinet member. Yes, no, 20. Yes. <laughs> I thank the um, councillor for um, her question. I mean, I wonder whether in fact um, she was able to read the full response in the um, report which actually um, gave a lot of detail and explained exactly why the council had received um, uh, the rating that it had. Um, the one thing that was obviously important to us in the whole inspection um, was that uh, the children um, fared well when they were with us and I can assure councillors that um, we have a very good um, reputation for our children in care and um, they flourish uh, while they're in our care in Wandsworth. Um, and as far as the safeguarding issues are concerned in this report, they were all administrative. That's all right. Uh, uh, first of all, can I say that um, I, I, I think I, I, I obviously trust um, Councillor Tracy's response when she says that the children um, who are looked after in this borough flourish and I commend her uh, tireless championing of their cause. Um, however, uh, the Ofsted result is something that stays with us for three years and is the headline that people will read that our services are only adequate and we learn from Ofsted that adequate is no longer good enough and uh, so I feel a bit disappointed that this happened and I just wish to ask one, one specific question and that is that in the issues raised in the previous Ofsted these had not been seen to be dealt with for the current Ofsted inspection how did that arise? Thank you. Um, it, there is an enormous um, administrative burden pushed, pushed quite rightly um, on councils um, as far as um, taking children into con care is concerned and patently there were some aspects that the social workers in the department felt weren't as important as making sure the care for the children was as excellent as it is um, and that that's a difficulty when the bureaucracy takes over one of the things and I mean this is the uh, I guess a criticism of Ofsted one of the things that we were criticized in the report on was um, children sharing bedrooms and the reason why um, we have allowed children in care um, to share bedrooms which is at the moment the legislation says that a child in care is entitled to a complete bedroom to themselves. But what we have um, worked terribly hard on in the borough is making sure that we don't separate siblings. It's really important not to separate siblings. So we've done that by placing siblings together when it's appropriate um, in a shared room. Um, and Ofsted didn't like the fact that we hadn't done enough uh, questioning and reporting and written work around why we'd made that decision. I have absolutely no difficulty with the decision. I'm sure it was the right decision. Um, and I do hope that Ofsted will come back and in inspect us, as I imagine they will, as an inadequate uh, rating 
uh, sooner than the, the three years. Adequate, I beg your pardon, but adequate. <laughs> sooner than the three years. I imagine they will be back within a year. I hope so, because the, the paperwork we can sort out, and, and it shouldn't have... It sh we shouldn't be criticised as an authority for paperwork, but it, there is an enormous administrative burden. Supplemental question. Councillor Dawson. Um, the report that came to the committee was um, welcomingly sort of frank in some of the issues that have been highlighted. And um, obviously we often look at issues to do with children looked after and fostering. And what the committee has done, and I would just ask the uh, cabinet member if she thinks this was an appropriate approach, that we would look in more detail at some of the administrative aspects um, and take a very critical look at the action plan as we go forward. Um, we probably concentrated more on the high level outcomes, how the children are looked after, but some of the underlying administrative detail um, obviously slipped and we therefore have asked that we will be looking at that again in the autumn. Um, would that have the support of the cabinet member? <laughs> yes, but it does also give me an opportunity, um, if I may, uh, with a bit of indulgence, Mr. Mayor. Um, the children in care um, have requested that they should meet all members of the council. We do it every two or three years, and um, the new children's council hasn't actually uh, come and met any of the councillors. I'm trying to arrange a date at the last week of April first week in May, but when, when you do get the email, I would just urge councillors to come and listen to the children themselves about their experiences, and how they think we as councillors might be able to help them. And if I could ask that you get that date sorted out as quickly as possible so that every member has it in his or her diary, I think that would be marvellous. Right, uh, the bad news, colleagues, is that the time for questions to the leader and the cabinet members have now elapsed.